I don't know if y'all heard me. How y'all doing today? Come on and stand if you are excited to be in the house of God today. God is so good. Amen? Okay, we do this thing, God is good all the time, right? Okay, so I say, God is good, and you say all the time. God is good. God is good. Amen. All the time. He is good. We're going to sing an oldie today. Someone, you ready? All right, come on. Come on, put your hands together. He is wonderful. Amen. So good to see all your smiling faces today. How many of you come expecting something today? I come expecting some good things today. Amen. Please watch our screen, and I'm not Welcome responsible for this. Welcome to Bayou Blue Assembly. Reminder to all of our board members. Ready to receive and have a good laugh. August was such a great month for junior high. Girls Only Sleepover was amazing. It was so impacted, and God did such an amazing move there. We also had a guys only pool party, and I heard it got a little crazy over there, but it was so fantastic for all the junior high to be able to come together and hang out. That's awesome. And in Kids Church, we have finished our Try Not to Laugh series, where we talk about the funny Bible stories, but with serious lessons. 
and oh, we need a good laugh. Do you need a good laugh? I love the laugh. I have a great plan. We should play the tortilla challenge. I love tacos, Miss Michelle. Not tacos. Do you know what she needs? Let's get at it. Time to get serious. I wanted to give you an update on the church and the progress. It's been amazing. It is coming along so quickly. We have ordered the sanctuary chairs. The upstairs and the downstairs is painted, the door frames. We also have a scheduled date for our floors to be installed. God is so good. We are excited. So keep on praying, keep on pressing in and hold on because the reveal is gonna be out of this world. We have a monthly move coming in September. What's the move? September 24th from 5 to 8 p.m. at the Restored Church, we will be having a bonfire and games. And it's gonna be so much fun. So make sure you sign up before September 18th with $5 so that way you can come to the monthly move. Awesome, and the women are getting ready to have a breakfast at Chick-fil-A on September 22nd. Go and meet um, Miss Mamie and Miss Laura um, there. You guys are gonna have a great time and enjoy it. Junior high students, listen closely. I'm gonna say it super slow for you. If you want a box of candy next Sunday in service, remember to bring these two items. You need your journal and you need a pen. Why do we need a pen? We got to take notes. If you just bring a journal, you will not get candy. So make sure you have your journal and your pen. 
That is awesome. And we are so close to meeting our BGC goal for our kids ministry, $5,000 to put a water well right there in Haiti. And we are gonna finish it with a kettle popcorn fundraiser starting September 4th. You can find a great kid and get them to sign you up with a bag of popcorn all the way through September 4th through October 2nd, and you will be able to pick up your popcorn. SUM starts this week. Are students excited? It'd be a little louder, we can't hear you. We have eight new students starting this trimester of SUM, and we have returning students as well. And what we ask from you is to partner with us and pray as they start this new journey. That's right, we are so excited for their year. And hey, fine arts students, if you're joining us for Kids Fine Arts, registration is due Sunday, September 4th. Turn it in to me or the Information Center. And hey, let's get back to family service. We love you. All right. Isn't that awesome? Got lots of stuff going on. You needed a laugh, right? Yeah. You needed a laugh. Well, today we have Dr. Dennis with us. Aren't you glad he's here? We are super, super excited that he is here with us. He's just coming to love on us. And uh, so today in our offering, if you would like to bless him, please mark that on your envelope because we want to bless him. Or on your check, just write, hey, this is for Dr. Dennis. If you have cash, it's all going to him and his ministry. We love them. We are partnered with them. And we love his ministry and what he's doing. And he's going to minister to you today. So right now, would you bow your heads with me as we pray over this offering? Father, we love you and we praise you. We thank you that you are here with us in this place, in this building. Your presence is here. You are here. And Father, we pray over this offering that it will bless this speaker today, God, that you will touch him, minister through him, bless his ministry, Father. We pray that you will bless those in, in this room today. Touch our hearts today, and we glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. As they're doing that, let me just make two announcements. Tomorrow is uh, Churches United Prayer Meeting. It will be at Vision Christian Center at 7 o'clock, so we would love to have everyone join us. It is, how many of y'all know what tomorrow is? It's the anniversary of stinking Ida. <laughs> so we're going to go and proclaim we are still here. We have survived in Jesus' name, and we're not stopping. So that will be tomorrow night. Um, also, for us, as you know, we are getting ready to get in our building. They're telling us it's going to be in December, the end of December. So hopefully we'll have a Christmas service in our building. That's what we're shooting for right now. But as you know, we are needing volunteers, and we have been asking you to pray where God would have you as we just start afresh, uh, beginning from the ground up again. We need teachers. We need uh, greeters. We need all these things. But one of the things we really, really need right now is we need uh, people to run our camera. We need media people. We need people to run our cameras. And when we get in the new building, and we need people for sound. So if you have an ear, and I don't know you have an ear for sound, or if you would like to be behind a camera, behind the scenes, come and talk with me because we need at least three people every Sunday and two or three people, well, actually three people for the sound. So that's six people we need. So if you would uh, like to have... Uh, do that, serve in that area. Please come talk with me or call the office and let me know because we want to start training you for that position as we get ready to get back in our building. Aren't you glad we're, we're about to get back in our building? Yeah. Amen. All right, would you stand with us, turn around and greet someone, love the, on them as they get ready to bring us back into worship.
flows, there is a fountain that drowns sorrows. There is an ocean deeper than fear, the tide is rising.
on, tell God what you need from him today. Oh God, we need so much. The one true source, God. Oh Jesus. We come alive in you, Lord. Oh, how I need you. Oh, how I need you. I've come expecting today. If you've come expecting today, just wave. Come on. Y'all, we're human. We need Jesus every day. break down the walls today God for us who are hurting today come and heal our hearts God let this place be a place where your anointing dwells where your heavens open up and your presence falls on this place like never before we are hungry for you oh God come on tell them I'm hungry for you oh God can't take another step without you, oh God. Let this place be holy ground. Let this place be holy ground. Amen. Jesus, you change everything. Let the devil hear it. Come on. Yes. 
the power, Lord, is the glory forever. Amen. And yours is the kingdom, yours. Come on. It's the power, Lord, is the glory forever. Come on. He's the king above all kings. Yours is the king. What a glorious day it will be. glory forever sing it out and yours is the kingdom yours is the power yours is the glory forever
Oh, glory to you, Jesus. Oh, just raise your hands. Oh, raise your hands that God begin to glorify his name right now. God, oh, we are in your presence. Lord God, we thank you and we praise you that, Lord God, you are here. Lord God, you are here doing mighty things. You are here, Lord God, pouring through your people, restoring, Lord God, those that are hurting right now in the name of Jesus. Lord God, it never gets old serving you. It never gets old, Lord God, pouring ourselves out to you. Lord God, we come before you right now. Dear Heavenly Father, there are those that we love that are under attack right now. I ask that you would touch Miss Talisa right now in the name of Jesus. Lord God, she needs you right now. Lord God, Sister Connie, touch her right now in the name of Jesus. Sister Kathy, Lord God, right now she's battling. Lord God, they found something. God, I don't know what it is, but you do and you're in control. Touch her right now in the name of Jesus. All those that are suffering with sickness in the name of Jesus. Touch them, God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, y'all give the Lord a hand clap of praise today. Glory to you, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Y'all can be seated. They're going to continue to pray right there, but we're going to we're going to let God just begin to do. I just want to say, just as I praise God, that you know, it's uh, tomorrow's going to be one year that that uh, Ida came through un, uninvited and unwelcome, stayed longer than we wanted her to. But but all that she tried to do, you know, God is counseling out and raising up and doing a work because the God that we serve is greater than any natural storm. The God that we serve is greater than anything that the devil can bring against us. The God that we serve is mighty. Amen. I tell you, I, I was thinking about, you know, when Brother Robert, I saw him and I remembered, you know, it was the Monday after the storm. I was, I'd finally driven far enough to get a, a, a signal and I was calling and calling. And as I started back, the phone rang and I answered and it was him. And he said, I'm just calling to check on you and be, I'm praying for you. It just, it meant so much, you know, that our friends that we, that we uh, made in ministry were thinking and praying. And it wasn't long after, a few weeks after that Dr. Dennis and, uh, and, and Lisa, Gary, and Sheila came. They drove into our parking lot while we were uh, passing stuff out, and and uh, and they hugged us and loved on us, and then said, "Give us some stuff we can take and give out." And they went down the bayou to people that couldn't get to where we were, and and they just loved our community. You know, there's nothing in the world that makes me love people more than to see them loving what I love. And they truly did. They just showed the love of God to the people that we love. And, and I just praise God for that so much. And, you know, when Brother Gary, uh, now him and Ms. Sheila are, are stepping away, they're, they're entering into a whole new avenue of ministry and life. They're, they're no, they, they're no longer the pastors in Shreveport. And so we'll, we may see them more often. But uh, they, they, they were the ones who introduced Dr. Dennis to us and, and uh, I just tell you this, that, that it didn't take me very long to, to love him and to appreciate the, the man of God. And I want y'all to let him know how much we appreciate him being here by giving him a hand, hand clap of, of appreciation. Brother, would you come? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Are you guys good? Can you see me? Usually in some churches, please turn the lights on. I'm black. <laughs> Not here. <laughs> uh, it's, it's just really awesome to be here. Pastor Packy, Pastor Janet, awesome to see you and be with you. Pastor Gary, thank you for introducing me to this, this crazy couple. I love Jesus and this amazing church. Um, are you guys excited? Are you guys ready? Are you guys hungry? Okay, okay, maybe you know. Okay, in Africa, I come from Africa. I come from Uganda, Africa, Uganda, Alabama. No, Uganda, Africa. It's where I was born and raised. And and um, um, church for us, church is really like like the happiest place on earth. 
Church is a place where sometimes the only time you smile is at church because life is really hard outside of church. Uh, you don't have much to eat, so you just can't wait to get to church. And when you get to church, you're just like in awe. You will believe the presence of God is in that space. Sometimes it's just a papyrus reed shelter. In fact, most, we didn't have church buildings. This is, this is too pretty. We didn't have this. We had a papyrus reed shelter. That was church. It's for 6,000 people underneath the papyrus reed shelter. It's porous, you know, so during the rainy season, everything is wet. All of us worship with our pants up just because you know, you're going to get soaked. You're in the presence of God, though. G Jesus is really there. He's literally there. Do you believe he's here? Yeah. Or do you believe he's figuratively here? No, he's really here. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Yeah. Tell him, neighbor. Yeah. Don't say neighbor. That's an American. Say, say neighbor. Yeah. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Yeah. He is here. Yeah. Maybe that neighbor doesn't believe you. Look at your neighbor. Find another neighbor and say, neighbor. Yeah. He is really here. He is here. Amen. Amen. He is here. And wherever he is, anything can happen. So the difference between a regular service and a God encounter, how many want that this, this afternoon, a God encounter? Come on. The difference between a regular service and a God encounter is expectancy. See, because he's every, he's in every church, is in everywhere, all around the, the, the world, wherever two or three are gathered in, you know, his Bible says, there I am. So he's there. The problem isn't him being there. The problem is you or me. Do I believe, well, he's, you know, I'm just going to come and just have a thing, a church thing, or I am in the presence of God. He's going to touch me. I'm going to praise him. I'm going to worship him. Worship is in this warmer upper. No, we get to worship. Bible says, let them praise his name with the dance. How many have done that today? Not really, because you know, no, no, because it's church, right? It's church. No, no, no. It's an instruction. Let them praise his name with the dance. And you know what? The Hebrew word is not like, it's not like a little tap. It's like, it's, it's whirling movement. Let them, let them, let them praise his name with a dance. And we do. In Africa, we do. One hour. Not, not 20 minutes. Not three fast songs, two slow songs. No. Five, five, sometimes four hours. And we're just going. And you know what? The dust begins to rise. Because, you know, this is too nice. I tell you, dirt flows. Dirt flows. 7,000 people going. You know what's going to happen. Dirt begins to rise. All the brown, black faces become brown. We go, we go both, everybody's blonde hair all of a sudden, you know. All you see is white teeth. But we're praising God and praising God. And the glory of God begins to fall. Glory of God begins to fall. And there forms a line on the stage going all the way to the back. People waiting to say, I was brought here blind. Now I can see. Nobody even prayed for me. Come on. No superstar preacher saying, he, no, 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 I, was, I came into the glory in the presence of God, but I expected to leave with my sight. And God met me. I mean, I mean, incredible miracle signs wonders, not because we're in Africa, because we have this thing called expectancy. God, I thank you. I know you're here. Ooh. Like right now, I'm going to preach. I'm going to speak for God, which is a scary thought. Now, you are going to listen, and you're going to receive a meal. Everybody say, a meal. a meal. Now, again, it could just be a little talk, which I, I talk. Uh-uh. It's God talking to us. Amen? If God's going to talk to me, I don't go, yeah, I get it. I'm like, God's talking to me. I'm hungry. Are you hungry? Okay, I grew up hungry. A lot of hungry. I've never seen a very hungry man be called into a rich man's house. Rich man says, okay, you've been hungry, you haven't eaten in a day and a half. Here's food. I've never seen that hungry man go, um, can I have some napkins, please? Or, oh, do you have ketchup? Do you have ketchup? No. If you're hungry, <laughs> you didn't wash your hands. I don't care. I'm hungry. Likewise, 
if you're hungry this afternoon, you're not going to go, eh, I wonder what version of scripture he's using today. Uh, where's this big Bible? Where's this big Bible? I don't, why does it keep moving? You know, I don't like his shirt. Yeah, I, if you're, if you're, I, the, the, this is too big. The music is, I kid you. you if you're hungry, you, if you're not as hungry, you're picky. And I really have to say this. I, I'm afraid you may, you will probably leave the same way you came if you're not hungry. Because this is just going to be just another message or whatever. But to the hungry, we have come. To the hungry, tonight, this afternoon, this next two hours or whatever, it's going to be different. You're going to be changed. Jesus is going to touch you. Amen? amen. Come on, amen. amen? Amen? So look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm hungry. I was a neighbor. I'm hungry. So before I, I minister, I want to invite a dear friend of mine. He's from India. See, God's sending all those people from the third world. Third world. Um, 70% of the body of Christ, 70% actually lives in the southern hemisphere now. Did you know that? You're in the minority. No, in the north. You brought us faith. Your forefathers brought us faith. We burned our shrines and got rid of our gods. Jesus set us on fire. Now we're coming back. Your cathedrals, most of you go around Europe, the biggest cathedrals have turned into nightclubs. The biggest night spots in, in, in England, is, uh, Germany, are old churches. Because they've got great acoustics. It's, it's terrible what's happening. Spain is like 2% Christian. Really Christian. So something's happening up here. So God is choosing people like me, crazy Africans, and Indians. My Indian brother. And we're coming. And what are we saying? You've changed it. This is not what you brought us. We're coming to remind you. It's about Jesus. <laughs> come on, come on, Robert. Thank you, Pastor, for letting me be here. Go ahead, buddy. I don't want to take the preacher's time. Crank it up. At times the load is heavy. At times the road is long. When circumstances come your way. And you think you can go on When you're feeling at your weakest You see Jesus, he's so strong He provides the answers When you thought all hope is gone He finds a way For I know that if he can paint the sunset and put the stars in place I know that if he can raise up mountains And calm the storm-tossed waves And if he can conquer death forever To open heaven's gates Then I know for you He'll see you through He finds a way I want you to listen to the second verse. And at times your heart is breaking or the pain is so intense. All you hold on to are broken pieces, to a life that makes no sense. He wants to lift you up and hold you. And man, it's torn event. Ha <laughs> ha! He'll pick up the pieces that you thought had all been spent. He finds a way. For I know that if he can. 
paint the sunset ha ha and put the stars in place i know that if he can raise a mountain and calm the storm toss waves and if he can conquer death forever to open heaven's gates then i know for you he see you through for i know that if he can paint the sunset ha, and put the stars in place i know that if he can raise a mountain and calm the storm toss waves and if he can conquer death forever to open heaven's gates then i know for you He'd see you through. He finds a way. He finds a way. We can conquer death forever and open heaven's gates. Then I know for you. He'd see you through. He finds a way. He finds a way. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He finds a way. Holy man, he finds a way. Ooh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Encore. <laughs> All right. Let's sing it, Dr. Leonard. All right. Uh, let's, let's, let's pray. Jesus, thank you for this moment. Thank you for your year. And uh, we, we trust you're going to do what you've done. Churches big and small around the world over the last 40 years. Jesus showing up. Touching, healing, delivering, disturbing as well. Because <laughs> sometimes you must stir, you must trouble the waters for us to change. And Jesus, today, Lord, may we not resist truth. May we not rationalize truth. May we not look away. May we not, may actually, may we even be just present here. We live in a very busy world where our minds are tr just busy. Lord, Lord, keep us here. Help us listen to you, hear you, and Lord, may transformation come. Father, thank you. In your matchless, glorious, majestic name, everybody said. Come on, everybody said. All right, I'm going to tell you a story that you guys know. I'm going to speak for a subject. It's a Greek word. It's lilaps. Everybody say lilaps. L I there you go L I laps lie laps what says it lie laps lie laps so okay okay Mark four thirty five now I'm from Africa we tell stories I love to tell stories one of my gifts so so I want you to just get enter this story you know the story many of you know the story but can we enter the story look at your neighbor say neighbor enter the story all right here we go the same day the Bible says on the same day evening had come uh, he said to them. Um, okay, uh, let us cross over to the other side. Now, he doesn't tell him, he doesn't quite tell him what he's going to do. On the other side was, was one of his most spectacular miracles about to happen. He's going to set, a, set free this demoniac who had terrorized an entire countryside in Gadara. He's, this is where he's going. But he didn't tell him. He didn't tell him the plan. He just said, can we cross over to the other side? So the the you know, Bible says uh, now when they had left the multitude they took him along in the boat as he was so and other little boats were also with him okay do you imagine do you picture this entourage it looks like an entourage man we don't know what happens to the little boats but eventually they were like oh where is he going he said hey guys just leaving let's go let's go groupies because Jesus at the time extremely famous. He's a miracle worker. He touches people. They get healed. In a, in a community where there's very little health care, here is a healer. Mary's boy is a healer. Touch him. In fact, many times the Bible says, as many as touched him were healed. So how many know? Entourage. Everybody say, look at your neighbor again. Say, neighbor. 
Imagine. So he, we know that he's been teaching all day. He's tired. And so they're leaving. They're crossing over. Little boats are following. Bible says, and a great windstorm arose. Everybody say windstorm. Windstorm, that's the Greek word lilaps. Lilaps, I'll describe lilaps. Storms that break forth from black thunderclouds in furious gusts with floods of rain. One of the other words is, is a fierce gale. Another word for lilaps is a hurricane. Uh-huh. Now, the, yeah, yeah, tomorrow's anniversary. Yeah, yeah, okay. Hurricane, hurricane. Ida, okay. Ida, Ida, Ida. Hurricane. This is hurricane. St- hurricanes, uh, hurricanes that, uh, are categorized by strength of the wind, right? So, the, so on a lake, hurricane force winds. On a lake. So, the Baba says, Baba says, it arose. Arose. Everybody say, arose. Arose also another word means genomai, which is which is is genomai, which is something that suddenly happens to someone catching one completely off guard. So again, now we know what Jesus is doing. Okay, here's a picture. Everybody say picture. So imagine, imagine, imagine. So, so so Jesus, we know he's sleeping. We know that. They're gonna tell us, but let me tell you, here's the picture. He's sleeping, and he's been working all day, really busy long day. These guys had the most incredible adventures. In fact, the Bible says if everything Jesus did was written about, there wouldn't be books to contain all the miracles. So can you imagine every evening, an evening like this, quiet. They're probably whispering, hey, Thomas, what was your favorite miracle today? I don't know. I, I, I doubt I remember. I don't know. What about you, Philip? 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 Oh, yeah, me, me. No, the shriveled woman. Oh, yeah. No, 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 me. Oh, the, the blind kid. The blind. No, 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 no. The dead one. Oh, yeah. The, you beat that, the dead one. So I can imagine. But they're whispering because he's sleeping. He's been working all day. He's sleeping. He's at the back. He's sleeping. Suddenly, these are ardent fishermen. If they had, if Jesus had said, hey, let's cross over the inside, and they had seen clouds gathering a certain way, they would have said, Jesus, can we go tomorrow? Can we wait a few hours? They would have said that. This is a sudden, out of nowhere, there. Boom. They're like, hey, Peter, did you know this is a, because all of a sudden, wind picks up. Hey, did you know about this one? No, no, it's, it's okay. It's probably going to be okay. Probably going probably to be okay. Winds speeding up there. Suddenly they're like, did you, did you know about this one? No, I didn't check the app. No, sorry, I didn't. I didn't. No, there's no apps. There's no apps. There's no apps. So, so, so it's going. And, and Jesus is still sleeping. So, so hey, don't die. hey, hey, water, water, water filling. Water, water, water over there. Water over there. So, it's the, the, it's the, so Baba says, the boat is already filling. Stop. I'm reading the story. I'm thinking, wait, 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 wait. These guys do exactly what Jesus tells them to do. And they hit a storm. This, ladies and gentlemen, brothers, sisters, the most confusing thing for Christians. Lord, I did what you told me to do. Where did lilacs come from? Oh, man, if you... (laughs) Lilaps is just suddenly out of nowhere. What? What? A couple of examples that come to me. This um, couple um, waited forever. You know, Jesus gives her this husband. It's just, he's the one. He's the one. They, they get married, big wedding, the churches. Everybody's just, and suddenly six months in, he has a, a headache. The headache, that's not going away. So they go to the doctor. She goes, the doctor, doctor says, uh, you need to come into my office. They're like, okay. Oh, doctor, can you tell us now? No, you need to come. Doctor, get in the office. Doctor says, uh, do you see this? This is a mass. Your beloved husband has maybe three months to live. Lilaps. Boom. Wait. 
I mean, it's kind of hard for her to pray. Jesus, what? You gave me this man. This is, this is my, we've got plans. We're going to have children. We're going to live to, what is this? Lilops. Boom. Suddenly, I don't know where, you've done the thing you know you're supposed to do. Yet the storm, boom. Now the couple, remember again, there's a couple, this couple been waiting to get pregnant 12 years. Everybody knows in church, we're believing, 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 believing. One day she's like, I'm pregnant, yay. It's a bit, without a doubt, it is a miracle. She's pregnant. So, of course, the church is excited. The baby begins to grow, 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 grow. Month five, month six, month seven. There's a, there's a room. Everybody, they don't even want to do We're not, not going to talk about the sex of the baby. Baby's coming. Week before the date that they think, you know, baby's supposed to come. They go for this ultrasound. Doctor's like, shh, you know, Something's wrong. Something's wrong. Um, something's really wrong. Um, sweetheart, you, we have to make a choice. You or the baby. This baby won't make it or you won't make it. Let me give you three days to make a decision. Lilops, where did that come from? You gave me, you gave us this baby, Lord. That's the disciples. Uh, we're about to die? No, 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 we're good. We're good. At first, you know what the boat already feeling means? The more they tried, the worse it gets. Couple number one, they pray, they pray, they pray. The one with the brain tumor, pray, pray, pray. Now the tumor gets bigger. The more they pray. It gets bigger. Boat filling. Husband, beloved, loses her sight because the tumor is now sitting on the optic nerves, whatever, whatever that, that chemistry, that's a, that the biology. It's getting worse. The more you try, the, more, the worse it gets. Meanwhile, Jesus, he's there. He's there. Now, we know a, a tired 30-year-old kind of tends to snore. We can imagine. Everybody say imagine. I told you. I like to imagine. If you're 30, you've been working all day. You're, you don't have a my pillow. You're really just resting your head on some log in the back of, the, of, a, of a bouncy boat. How many know you're kind of like going? <laughs> so Jesus is, Jesus is snoring. They are in trouble. He's snoring. This is hard to do exactly what you're supposed to do, yet you hit a storm. Verse 38, but Jesus, he was in the stern asleep on a pillow. So I can imagine the debate. Um, Maybe I, I would I would imagine they maybe initially they first raised their voices. Hey, 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 hey pick, pick that up, pick it up. I'm trying to get him up, but no, he won't wake him up. Sleeping, sleeping. Now, hey, hey, don't don't do that. Don't do that. No, Jesus is like, <sighs> if up, you know what? We're gonna wake him up. We have to wake him up. We're gonna die. We're gonna die. So who's gonna do it? I don't know. Not you, Peter. You're too abrasive. Um, Andrew, you're going to think about it. You're, you're going to be too technical. John, 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 you're his best friend. You want to go wake him up? I, just, just me imagining. So, so the Bible says they wake him up. Hey, can you believe he's sleeping? The boat, he's wet. It's wet. He's sleeping. He's wet. Hey, 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 wake him up. Hey. Teacher, do you not care that we're perishing? <laughs> Don't you care that... I am in trouble because this here, it's speaking to me contrary to the plan because lilops makes you forget the plan. Jesus didn't say, um, he didn't say, uh, guys, can we attempt to cross the lake and capsize mid-lake? 
That was not the plan. No, but lilacs make you think that's the plan. Because it's, whoa, jarring. <sighs> Where did this one come from? Lilacs also makes you forget who you are. Jesus' disciples, really, these guys thought that the next morning there would be news around this area. Jesus and his disciples attempted to cross the lake and they died. This, they imagined that that could even be a possibility because lilacs is, makes you forget. A good storm makes you forget the plan. Good storm makes you think, where is God? A good storm makes you think, I don't know. I don't know about this Jesus thing. Uh huh. Especially if you look around and other boats are okay. Hey, what happened? Hey. Yeah. The Bible says Jesus, then he arose. He basically is like, <clears throat> What? What? The Bible says, he rebukes the wind. Mm. Wind is big. Wind. Puh, stop. Wind. Stop. The Bible says it speaks to the sea. Sea. Peace. Be still. <sighs> the Bible says and there was a, the wind ceased and there was a great calm. I bet you they're all like, because you know, right? It's a, a, <laughs> so. I'm thinking the story is over. It is not. Next verse, it says to them, these are very perplexing questions. He says to them, I even would like to say ridiculous questions. The first question, why are you so fearful? Because we thought we were going to die. Excuse me, Jesus. I know that you're God and probably maybe you're not, you're, but we, we looked at, looked at the evidence. You said, let's cross over. The evidence is saying we can't cross over. The evidence says we're going to die. We looked at the evidence that contradicted your plan and we tended to, we believed it. That's why. Oh, the next question, even more absurd. How is it that you have no faith? Okay, wait. How many kind of think this is unfair? I can't be, become a win church. This is an unfair question. Jesus, okay, Jesus, um, first of all, why are you so, so afraid? Ridiculous question. We're going to die. We think wind, lilacs, right here on a, everybody. Any human would think they're going to die. That's why we're afraid. Okay, okay. What, what, so, no faith, no faith. Wait, wait. That's not fair. I want you to get this. This is why I came today. This little statement. How is it that you have no faith? Wait, faith, I thought... I thought faith is the ability to wake Jesus up. When they say, Pastor Packy is a man of faith, what does that mean? Oh, you go to him, he's going to pray for you. It's, things are going to happen because Pastor Packy knows how to wake Jesus up. Stay with me. When they call me man of faith, oh, Dr. Dennis, should pray for you. Because why? Because he's praying for a lot of people. Hey, and they, you need to, he's a man of faith. He knows how to say, Jesus, please. Stop this! And Jesus tends to listen. Right? But Jesus is defining faith differently, ladies and gentlemen. The question, implicit in the question is this. You shouldn't have woken me up. That's what he was kind of saying. He's not saying, oh guys, oh why did you take so long? No, he's saying... How come you don't have, why are you afraid? Why, basically, you should have let me sleep. I had a few more hours to sleep. Really, Jesus? Really? Because, are you sure, are you ready for this? Jesus seems to define faith differently. The ability to still those emotions, to not panic, even though there's all the reasons to panic. Faith, therefore, being defined as 
the ability to say stop it when everything says panic, panic. You say, mm, mm, mm. but you go, your business is going under. The numbers don't work. This is the second, third rule, third month, third world quarter. I know you're a tither, you're a giver, but the things are not going to you, you say, Shh. The system is saying, God's left you. You're in trouble. Now you say, you say, faith is saying, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. I know evidence is telling me this is bad. I know the doctor says six months, and it's month four, and the symptoms are getting worse. But you know what faith says? Mm -mm -mm. My God is awesome. My God's good. My God's good. My God's good. Evidence, evidence, evidence is saying, no, it's not. This, 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 this. Friends, Jesus is asking, why did you panic? Why did you forget the plan? Why did you listen to the storm? Every storm has a message. Every storm has a message, and the message is, God's not faithful. God's not sufficient. You are too weak. You are going to die. You will never make it. That's what the storm, but we, you, me, have got to, mm, Jesus is in my boat. He's in my boat. And then look, things don't look okay. When I open my eyes, ah, uh, when I close my eyes, I know he's in my boat. 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 He's in your boat. He's in your boat. Three things about lilaps already. Lilaps is unavoidable. Now, this is, it shouldn't be revelation, but it kind of is, and I'm shocked. This is our 10th day we've been going around the Mississippi or Louisiana. We're, we're, you know, every, we're going to churches across the country, especially. It seems revelation, like revelation. I don't know why it's revelation to tell people there's going to be trouble. It seems like 30 years ago, and I, I'll permit me to say this as an observer, I've been saying it about 42 years and I've been serving in America in the last 30 or 20, whatever. And, and, and it seems as though about 30 years ago, there was a birthing of a doctrine that led, or a cluster of doctrines that led us to think that just because we're Christians, we are promised happy, happy, happy. Everything's going to be happy, happy. Deception lies because, because, because do you know why? Do you know why one third of the Christians, the body of Christ has fallen away because of COVID? It's because of that doctrine. A prevailing doctrine that Jesus just wants us happy. If that was preached to me, I wouldn't be saved. Do you know why? Because in Africa, when you get saved, you're in trouble immediately. Jesus causes you trouble. You have to go to monthly witchcraft ceremonies, for example. You get saved, you can miss one. You don't miss two. You miss three, the whole family comes at you. You need to go, you, you're betraying the gods. You're in trouble. You're extricated from the family. Immediate, you're in trouble immediately. If you're a Muslim, you're in trouble. Jesus is trouble. Some of you are like, oh no, yes. And, and friends, historically, Jesus has been trouble. I came to divide families, the Bible says. What? What is that? What? But I want them to like me. No. They're not supposed to like you. We don't, this is a popularity contest. We were ill prepared for COVID. We were ill prepared for all of this. Africa, it's it, trouble baked in the cake. Like what? what? I don't want to live there. Sorry, you live in America. You think you're insulated? You go trouble here too. Lots of trouble. You can't. Jesus doesn't save you from trouble. He is Lord in spite of the trouble. Because when trouble comes, come on. Okay, okay, and I've done this around the world. Okay, around the world. Literally, listen here. About the last three years, 
tens thousand, some churches are 10,000. I asked the question, how many people here? Your marriage is amazing. Man, she just runs your baths and she does, you know, he just, he just, he shops for you. He irons for you. He's, he's amazing. Your kids act like little angels. They're perfect. Your health, you feel like 20 every day. You've got more money than you can spend. Everything is amazing. How many? No. Zero. Because if your marriage is good, your kids... If your marriage is good and your kids are good, your blood pressure, stuff's not good. Doctor's not happy with your numbers. You don't, you're not good. Your health, okay. If your marriage is good, kids are good, health is good, you don't have money. If your marriage is good, your kids are good, health is good, you have all the money, your mother-in-law hates you. Something is crazy. It should not be revelation to tell you lilaps is unavoidable. In fact, my kids have heard me teach about this all the time. They say, Daddy, they, we, we, we just out of joke, we say, if you're not a storm, in, in, you're not, if you're not in a storm right now, you just come out of one or you're heading right into one. That is life. Ladies and gentlemen, you are. The first generation in all of history to believe that life should just be happy. You're the first one. Generations before you throughout history have believed life is mostly bumpy. <laughs> and when you have happy days, go drink, go marry, because trouble is coming. That is how the world has thought throughout history. You think... Because you're Americans and you're amazing and you're smart. That you, for you, this, your life, every friend. And I know, you know how, how I know that you believe this? Every job you get must lead into a promotion. Hallelujah. No. Every business you start, it must work. Hallelujah. No, it doesn't. Oh, your body is supposed to feel this way until you're 99. How? You're going to, these joints will start to squeak at a certain point. This should not be revelation, but we've been beguiled. And then we've put theology around it. God, it gives you the desires of your heart. Desires of your heart means what? So you're going to just be happy. Be, 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 be. By the way, no trait of character is formed without storms. Without pressure. Pressure now, it's going to be like, oh man, I came to church to be told there's trouble. Trouble is going to come. Yes. Sorry, I came to tell you trouble is okay. Trouble is normal. Trouble is part of the human experience. If you've never been, if you've never been, if, you've, if you're a sailor and you've never hit a storm, you're in a bathtub. You're not on an ocean. You're not on a sea. Because sailors, you're like, hey, you don't go to a sailor and say, oh, there was a storm. Sailors will say, yeah. Similarly, life, you will befriend a toxic person and they will hurt you. Don't panic. That's why I was with an Eskimo, with an Eskimo uh, friend over there in, up in the Alaska. And he said, there's something that's wrong, he said. He was my age. He said, we're seeing these teenage suicides in our villages for the first time ever. And I said, same here in Africa too, in our villages for the first time ever. And we all looked at our phones and we're like, yeah, yeah, it's the phone. The phone makes you think, oh, I'm in Alaska, it's minus 80, but oh, this person is in Beverly Hills. He must be so happy. I want to be there. And he, they don't tell you that this guy in Beverly Hills is on drugs. So you idealize. And so for the first time, teenage suicides. I, as a child, I never heard on our villages one teenage suicide. One. Never. Depression? What's that? Panic attacks? What's that? Anxiety? What's that? Why? We believed life is bumpy. You believe life is happy. 
It is not. Mm, okay, don't, don't leave yet. Lilaps. Okay, lilaps are unavoidable. Lilaps, are you ready for this? No, you're going to like this one. Okay, let me first give you John 16, 33. In this world, Jesus promises, there's abundant life. Is da, 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 da. But he says, in this world, you will have tribulation. Everybody say tribulation. The, the Greek word is called thlipsis. It means extreme pressure. <laughs> Jesus promises extreme pressure. Really? Jesus, I don't want, I don't want to read. Okay. I don't want, the, I don't like that scripture. I don't like it because I want to say, in this world you will have happiness and joy. That's what I want to read. Oh, okay. In this your tribulation, but be of good cheer, which is, also, which is also crazy. He says, you're going to have pressure, but be happy. What? Why? You know what I want to read? Be happy because I will save you from it. Right? No, he doesn't say that. Be happy because I have overcome the world. I have overcome the world. Betrayal, pressure, poverty. Your house is blown away. Cry. It is okay to cry. But you wipe those tears because Jesus has overcome. Jesus has overcome the world. Jesus has overcome the world. Come on, amen, amen, amen. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, Thlipsis is unavoidable. Thlipsis, are you ready for this? Is temporary. If you faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. And defeat doesn't mean final defeat. I mean, no, Ida, Ida did leave. And when Ida leaves, the storm leaves. Lilaps reveals who you are. Amen. That you need him. Philosopher poet Titus Lucretia says, Look at a man in the midst of doubt and danger, and you will learn in his hour of adversity what he really is. I know Pastor Packy, you know this church is strong. Do you know how you, do you know how you, do you know how your do you know how your church is strong? No, because I'm blessed. We're blessed. No, no, no. Because of what you've just gone through. When December, the first service, back in a church, you will look at a church filled with strong people. Ah, strong people. We know you're strong. Not because God's blessed you. God's get, no, no, no. We still know you're strong because of what you've been through. Look at the carcasses. Look at the Goliaths that God has helped me slay. That's my strength. Not that because he shielded me. He shielded the defeat, the, the, whole, the whole like hey, defensive posture. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. We got a big God, a good God. And you know what? He's in my boat. Hallelujah. He's in my boat. Lilap's big time. Are you ready? Last message. Last point. They reveal who God is. Who God is. Who God is. Bible says, verse 41. They were terrified. And they asked each other, who is this? <laughs> they had seen him raise the dead, do all the but, but this thing you just did? Who is this? Friends, some of you have never really met Jesus the healer until the doctor says, uh, you're in trouble. Then you'll meet him. Some of you don't know Jesus the Deliverer. You've read about him in the stories of the Bible. Until your neighbor, your boss wants you fired, then you'll meet him. Friends, these storms give us the ability, the, the opportunity to really see. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God. We serve. I know he's amazing. You know why? You know why I dance? You know why I've seen him do woo. I've been poisoned twice. I didn't die because of Jesus. They thought we're going to die. I've been shot at. I know. I, I know. He's, I know. I don't just read about him. Now, some people, some people say, uh, Dr. Dennis, I want your faith. I'm like, ugh. I don't know if you want. Okay, you want the stories. But do you want the experience? that 
precipitate the stories. Uh, students, see my students in Bible school. Hey, Dr. Dennis, I, I want, I'm praying for the faith of Daniel. And I look at him, I'm like, ah. Are you ready to spend a night with the lions? The only thing God did, actually, <laughs> the lions didn't eat Daniel. The only thing, God shut their mouths. He didn't make them feel full. They were still hungry. So can you do a whole night of, <sighs> have, you, have, you heard, have you ever heard of a lion? I have. It's not like on TV. Simba. Oh, no, Mufasa. Mufasa came to our tent one time, and I have never forgot. I, was, I went all night, all night. I, I was wide awake like this. No coffee. Because he came every, at three. I'm like. And I, and I was thinking, I was thinking, Lord, I respect Daniel all the more. He was in there with them. They were hungry, and they would come. <laughs> they just couldn't eat him. In the morning, he probably peed in his pants. Sorry, with all due respect. Because, okay, do you know why? He does not know that God is going to save him. He didn't know that. God didn't say, okay, Daniel, they're going to throw you in the lion's den, but be, be cool. No. No. He knew, he, knew, he probably said, uh, if he had a wife, I don't know if this is a record for a wife. Oh, I'm going to have come down. Guys, okay, bye. You know, God, okay, God, God, I'm going to meet you. You know, he, that's what he's thinking. He didn't know that God was about to do this amazing thing. So he's all night, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m. Oh, like, oh, oh, they haven't eaten me. Maybe they're going to eat me next hour. Maybe they're not hungry yet. Until morning. And I would say, oh, Daniel, <laughs> Daniel's a mighty him. Do you want to pay the price? Unfortunately, you live in a culture that actually seeks comfort, that's obsessed with comfort. You shall forever just read about these stories unless we have a shift beginning right now. I'm here to tell you God's about to do some amazing things. America stands on the precipice of great things. In the midst of all the craziness, God's getting ready to do amazing things. Right now, he is. we are actually, the rest of the world is shocked at what you guys are doing. You guys meaning Americans, the West. It's like, what? 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 Okay, you've got boy parts, but you're not really a boy because you don't feel like a boy. We're shocked. We're like, what? So what if one day, I was with a group of Methodist kids up in the mountains in, the, in North Carolina, where, 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 and, 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 and I said, oh, what if one day a bunch of white people feel like, I feel like black, I feel black, I feel black. So there was a, there was a bunch of black kids that said, nah-uh. <laughs> oh, and then, I, and then I jokingly said, what if I feel like a cat? I want to be a cat, and you better not tell me I'm not a cat. And I was joking. Went home. I gave the example to my daughter. My daughter is in, you know, uh, one of the big schools. She said, Daddy, no, that's not a joke. They've got what's called furry places. <laughs> where if you feel like a cat, you really can go cat. You go, go, you go, purr, 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 purring. I feel like a cat. Okay, it is serious. Do you know what's happening? They're removing ob absolute truth. Whoever they are, I mean, it's not, it's not, this is not a political statement. This is the dissolution of ab 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 absolute truth. Postmodernism, post absolute truth. Truth is what you think it is. Problem is, the Bible talks about sin. The Bible talks about absolute truth. Guess who they've just added to the list of haters? Christians. Because we tell people what to do. We tell people they are wrong. We're in trouble. We're in trouble only if we're like, we're weak. There is an invitation, ladies and gentlemen, brothers, sisters, for strength. You are about to experience what we experience over in Africa. 
Well, you have to make a choice for Jesus. For up to now, America, it's been easy to be a Christian here. It's really been easy. A good American is nice American. You're going nice. You kind of go to church. And nobody, nobody minds you. But when they start to mind you going to church, then there will be an invitation to be strong. To be strong in the Lord. And I'm here to tell you, you need to be strong. You need to be strong. First of all, we need to absolutely dismantle this idea that God just wants you happy. Now, he wants you rejoicing. It's a different word. It means it's not, it's not hilarity like <laughs> every day. <laughs> no, because sometimes you're going to cry. Sometimes your kid's in jail. I mean, no, you're not like, hey, hey, my kid's in jail. <laughs> no, you're like, good God, 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 I love you, please. He wipes those tears away. The ability to say, Lord, in spite of what the enemy is hitting me with, in spite of what my world looks like, I rejoice in you. I rejoice in you. I'm going to stand because I've got you in my boat in spite of the work. I'm going to, we're not promised smooth. You can get smooth for a day, but a storm's coming. Friends, I'm here to tell you, storms are coming. First of all, I don't need to tell you that you got storms in your life. This is not one of those messages that, that you say, ah, this message today was not for me. Uh-uh. It's for everybody. Because all of you, again, if you're not in a storm right now, it's coming. Oh, don't speak that over me. <laughs> It's almost, almost, it's like faith world. I'm, I'm a faith guy, but sometimes faith guys, we're just like, this is just delusion. I don't need to speak it over you to, to tell you that there's no such thing as all your friends being absolutely amazingly faithful all your life. There's no such a thing. One of them is going to go, well. Every job does not lead into a promotion. You're going to get fired one of these days. Your health. You can't have perfect blood pressure, perfect everything, perfect. Now you're 78, you're 82, everything's amazing. Eh, all the numbers are like, ooh, there's no such thing. Because you eat, you eat bad. I'm sorry, our country eats terribly. Eventually it catches up. An apple today is not even an apple in the 70s. Even if you just, me, I'm going to eat all the fruits. Even if you eat all the fruits, they're not as nutritious as they need to be. So your body's going to squeak. But if it squeaks, come on. He's with me. He's in my boat. I am here to encourage you. First of all, again, difficult message. I could preach about something else, but the Holy Ghost says, talk about lie laps. Talk to my children. So they stop whining. Stop the pity party. Because some of you, as soon as you get you, some of you, uh, this is, uh, may, I, may I go there? I'm going to go there. May I go here? I'm going to go here. Some of you, I think you're addicted to sympathy. Because I've prayed for people that, okay, God's going to help you. You're good. The next day, yeah, but Dr. Dennis, please pray for me. I've just, I've started another prayer chain. Okay, prayer chain. Okay, didn't you pray for this? Yeah, yeah but... And guys, please pray, please, please pray, please. So you, if you live a certain kind of life, sometimes you become, you develop a codependency to sympathy. The only time people call you is when you're in trouble. So you don't want to get out of trouble. Don't shoot me. Sometimes, come on, we prayed for this thing last month. You don't have to say, can we pray, can we pray again, again, and again? No, you don't have to, have to. How are you, how's your brother, how's your son doing? Yeah, pray for us. Just, just pray for us, amen. We're, we're believing God. Yeah, but don't, don't, God heard you the first time. Uh-oh, may I go here too? Just, just okay, one, one more place and then I'm going to pray, I promise. I promise. God's not thinking like, okay, I'm going to move when 
if there's two quarts worth of prayer in this jar, then I'll move. Because sometimes, some of you think that, that, you know, let's tell little people to pray so, so that way God really hears us. No, no, no. Sometimes just two or three. Sometimes one. There's been times where, Pastor Packy, you're not calling the whole church. You have a, a, something hits you, you just call your friend, hey, pray for me. Pray in the spirit. How's that? That's even better than English. Okay, you don't like that. It's okay. You, I'm leaving. I'm I'm leaving tomorrow. <laughs> I can say certain things that your pastor can't say. I can say you when you guys come to Africa, you say things we can't say. I'm here. I'm gonna say things you can't say. Cause that's the prophetic mandate of my life. I'm not. You're not supposed to like what I say. In fact, in fact, if you like everything I say, I've just missed it. I don't want you to like everything I say. In fact, I want you to be bothered by what I say today. I want this to stay with you. I want this to go. I want you to go. Ugh. I went to church. Ugh. An African. Ugh. That's what I want. I want you to because conviction. What happened to? Where, where did we ever get the thing that I need to like everything God says? That's not God. Historically, when God speaks, we go, hoo, hoo. we don't like what he says because he shines immaculate light around our lives. And so today, Holy Ghost is shining. I promise you this, though. If you get this, you will stop being yo-yo Christians. Up and down, up. When God seems to be moving, you're on the first row. When you get fired, you're in the last row. Because you, oh, this is big. Are you ready for this? You and I have the audacity to say, God, according to what I see, I don't think you're good to me. To indict God on account of my experiences? Because I didn't, I mean, I didn't see you. No, God is good. Not sometimes, all the time. In fact, that's the greeting, Pastor Janet. That's the greeting in Africa. God is good all the time. We don't even say, how are you? Hey, no, no, God is good. And I remember this one, I'll tell the story. This one, it was one lady comes, she, she comes, she, she was missing a button. And she, I saw her, I noticed her because I'm preaching and, and she's holding her dress like that. because She's missing a button. Of course it's worship first. So for about an hour or two she's going, hey, Jesus is a mighty. She's holding her button, her dress. Because if she lets it go, she's, it's going to, you know, she has every reason not to come to church that day. She has no button. She doesn't, and she walks to church. She's in the house of God. No pattern. She comes at the end of the service and says, Pastor, God is good. I said, all the time. He's good even if I, looking at me, he doesn't look good today. Because sometimes, how many know? You look around your life and God doesn't look good. He is good even still. And this faith we're talking about is can you, before Jesus stills the storm, can you still your emotions? Can you tell your mind, mind, you shut up now. I'm not listening to you because you're giving me logic. Logic tells me I'm going to sink. Logic tells me I'm in trouble. Logic tells me I'm undesirable. Logic tells me it's the third boyfriend. Logic tells me the second marriage. Logic is telling me I'm undesirable. Shut up. Evidence, shut up. I will dwell in the assurance. My papa, he may be sleeping. Sleeping means he's not moving right now. He's still here. He's still here. Kura de Bujobadava. He's still here. Gi is still here. Jesus is here. 
Jesus is here. Amen. He's here. He's here. Woo! He's here. Oh, he's here. God is good. Come on. God is good. God is good. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. I'll tell you, tell you this story about this Horatio Spafford. Chicago attorney. Wife, five kids, thriving business. Says, I've been blessed beyond measure. Life seems really okay, amazing. Tragedy hits, boom, loses his only son. 1871, fire of Chicago, loses everything. 1874, his wife and four daughters, they board a ship. They were supposed to all, all of them cross back to England. He gets a telegraph, just stay back. He, so he sends them on to England. And as they're trying to cross the big old pond, the Atlantic, the ship capsizes. He's distraught. He hears the news. Then finally, he gets a, a two word telegraph saved alone from his wife. All his daughters dead. As he is crossing over to meet his wife, he pens this beautiful song Robert, come sing. And I want you to think about this song as we're about to bring it home. When peace like a river attended my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say. trials should come let this blessed assurance control Thank you, Jesus. Holy Ghost wants to minister to a couple of people. The young man, second row. Yeah, come here, sir. Come here, 
Put your hands up.